Hello friends, welcome to Concepts of Geology. We were learning crystallography now and on the last class we completed the second class of module 1 that was the concepts of unit cell and lattices. Today on the third class we will learn how to choose a prominent unit cell when a lattice is provided. Okay, So let's begin. Before going to the main topic allotted for today, we need a recall session once again of the last class. On the last class, we learned that the lattices were the blueprint of arrangement or the basic plan of arrangement of the atoms. Okay? They had no physical existence. Their concept was only to be conceived into our mind. Fine. They were extensive in three dimensions. That means if I add more and more lattice point in any direction, the lattice is going to be extended up to uh, infinity. For example, suppose a square net or suppose hexanet. Uh, etc. Squared net means the basic plan of arrangement is like a square grid pattern while the hexanet means the basic plan is like hexagons. What was motif? Motif was the physical entity which is actually repeating. They have a particular dimension for example suppose an atom or a group of atoms. Okay. And the last concept was of unit cell. Unit cell was the geometric shape made up of the motif and the surrounded empty spaces which is creating the entire structure when they are repeating in three dimension. So that means or not only the motif is repeating, the surrounded space is also repeating. So this entire concept is called the unit cell. That means the motif plus the empty space which is surrounding the motif. The total thing is repeating and creating the entire structure. This is the unit cell. Fine. So, lattice, unit cell and uh, motifs are well understood. Now, let's concentrate on this uh, structure or on this pattern. Okay. We have to find out the correct unit cell for this structure. So, before going into the unit cell, we need to know, we need to find out what is the motif of this uh, pattern. Look here, the motif is one black dot and one open circle. Okay. So, this pair is actually repeating and creating the entire structure. So, this is the motif, one black dot and one open circle. The second one is what is the lattice? What is the plan for this arrangement? Okay. Notice here we have two types of vector. One is horizontal vector, this one and the second one is a vertical vector, this one. Now, clearly the horizontal vector is longer than the uh, vertical one. Okay. So, this is this object, this two dimensional object is actually a rectangle. Okay. And this rectangular grid pattern is the basic plan of this uh, arrangement of the motif. Okay. So, the lattice here is a rectangular grid pattern. Now, the ultimate question, what is the unit cell here? To answer that question, we need to know what is the symmetry present in this uh, structure or in this pattern. Very clearly, we have a horizontal mirror planes okay, like this uh, dotted lines. Okay. So, when this mirror plane is operating on this motif, this is creating this one. And again, when operating on this one, this is creating this one. Okay. So, that is how the entire structure is created. So, the mirror plane is the first symmetry element. Now, some of my friends will tell that, will say that uh, we have a two-fold rotational axis on the center of this pattern. That means, if I rotate this entire pattern 180 degree, we cannot differentiate between the resulted image and this one. Okay. So, to examine the presence of two-fold rotational axis on this pattern, I have chosen a small representative of the pattern. Okay? Now, I will rotate this and examine whether there is any two-fold axis or not. So, for doing that, I need to copy it here like this one and after that, one 180 degree rotation. So, now clearly see here that this pattern and this pattern is not similar because here the black dots were on the left side while in this picture the black dots is uh, on the right side. Okay. So, these lattices or the these uh, patterns are not similar. Okay. So, actually there is no two-fold axis present here. So, ultimately the symmetry element is only one horizontal mirror plane, nothing else more. Fine. Now, we know the symmetry of the pattern also. So, this is the time to uh, find out the unit cell. Definitely the first choice, the first choice will be this one. Okay, The one motif, one complete motif that means one black dot and one open circle surrounded by a certain area of empty space. 
ओके सो वेन दिस एंटायर थिंग इज रिपीटिंग दिस इज क्रिएटिंग द दिस स्ट्रक्चर और दिस पैटर्न सो दिस इज वन यूनिट सेल बट देयर मे हैव वन मोर चॉइस वन मोर ऑप्शन सपोज दिस वन हियर आई एम टेकिंग टू मोटिव्स इन टोटल ओके सी टू ब्लैक डॉट्स एंड टू ओपन सर्कल्स एंड द सराउंडेड एरिया इज डबल हेयर सो इफ आई रिपीट दिस वन इन टू डायमेंशन अगेन आई कैन क्रिएट दिस स्ट्रक्चर ऑल्सो सो दिस ऑल्सो मे बी एन ऑल्टरनेटिव चॉइस फॉर यूनिट सेल द थर्ड ऑप्शन इज लिटिल बिट कॉम्प्लिकेटेड बट दिस ऑल्सो मे बी पॉसिबल ओके हेयर वन कंप्लीट मोटिव इज टेकन इन क्यूमुलेटिव सी दिस ब्लैक डॉट इज टेकन हेयर जस्ट हाफ एंड हाफ ओके and the four corners are made up of one fourth of this open circle so in cumulative they are uh, constructing one complete open circle and one complete black circle black dot okay so that means here i have uh, one complete motif and the surrounding uh, empty space the fourth choice this one is the most complicated choice but uh, this may be again possible here i have two half open circles and two half black dots okay so in uh, cumulative they are again constructing one motif in total these are the four choices of the unit cell so now the question is which one is the most prominent choice which one is the most correct choice so to know that we need to know how to choose a correct unit cell there are definitely some rules rather uh, conventions which guide us to choose a unit cell indifferently okay we will learn some basic uh, conventions or basic rules of choosing unit cells okay so the first rule says unit cells should fill the space completely without gap by joining them together only by translation along all the three spatial directions so that means suppose this is an object okay parallelogram if i want to find the unit cell of this object so i need to break it okay so suppose i am breaking it into smaller pieces so the pieces may be suppose this one a triangular fragment okay or if i take two triangles side by side then this parallelogram will be again uh, one alternative choice now we need to know what is the correct choice uh, between these two figures okay so this rule is saying that we need to fill the space completely by joining them together only by translation okay so first taking this triangle okay suppose like this so that means i am taking the first triangle here and after translation this triangle is coming here okay now see this gap is not filled okay so i have a simple way to fill this if i rotate the triangle like this okay and then this triangle can be fitted to one another like jigsaw puzzle and see this is creating this object identically so is this a correct choice of unit cell no because after translation we need a rotation also to fill the space so this is not a correct choice the triangle is here a defaulter come to the point of this parallelogram let's see this one suppose this is the first parallelogram and when i am translating this one just like this animation so i am able to fill the space completely only through translation okay no rotation is required here so that means this parallelogram is the best fit for the unit cell uh, of this object according to this rule 1 okay next coming to the point of rule 2 rule 2 is saying unit cell should have the same symmetry as the lattice now let's concentrate on this uh, pattern okay this is actually a square grid pattern if i connect this motif points through lines we will have a square so that means the lattice here the plan for the arrangement of motif points is a square grid pattern okay so what is the symmetry of this pattern when it is a square grid pattern that means it has a four fold rotational axis on its center okay so if i rotate it 90 degree this open circle is going to be superimposed on this one and this open circle is going to be superimposed on this one not be confused as here i have two black dots on this this row while i have three black dots on this row okay you just uh, ignore this last row and now think when if i rotate this resulted image is just identical with this original image okay so we have a four fold rotational axis on the center of this pattern 
what else symmetry is present here the next symmetry is a mirror plane a set of mirror planes that is going through this diagonal okay like this one now let's select the correct unit cell for this pattern i have chosen two unit cells for this pattern okay first one is this one let's check the diagonal mirror plane and the four fold rotation axis is present or not definitely we do not have any four fold rotational symmetry in this unit cell okay while we may have the four fold rotational symmetry on this unit cell okay if i place the rotational axis here we may have a four fold rotational symmetry okay now think of the mirror planes this unit cell is not possessing this mirror plane while again on this unit cell it is clearly shown that the mirror plane is passing through this diagonal okay so clearly this unit cell is the best choice rule 3 is saying unit cell should be of the smallest possible size that means the edge vectors should be smallest in length these are called the reduced unit cell now think of this pattern what is the motif here motifs are these black dots and what is the lattice the plan of arrangement the plan of arrangement is again a square grid pattern now i may have two choice of the unit cells okay a is having the minimum length of this uh, vectors this translation vectors okay and eventually these translation vectors are just equal so that means the uh, unit cell here is a uh, square on the other hand look at this alternative choice b okay here this horizontal vector is just as doubled of this vertical vector and so this is occupying an area that is doubled of this a unit cell now according to this rule this choice unit cell a is the best or the prominent choice as this unit cell is possessing the smallest possible size okay so this is called the reduced unit cell next rule 4 as far as there is no alternatives each unit cell should contain only one motif in cumulative these unit cells are called primitive unit cell okay now let's concentrate on this pattern okay these are the motifs here and the uh, plan for the arrangement is in a diamond shaped pattern okay so clearly we have two types of choices here first one is this one and the second one is this one now see here we have one complete motif in total or in cumulative that means i am using one fourth of this motif in this corner one fourth of this motif on this corner and same similarly here and here so in cumulative we are using one complete motif okay on the other hand see this choice of unit cell here we are using two motifs in total okay one complete motif in the center and on the corner one fourth of this each motifs okay this is called the primitive unit cell while this is called the non primitive unit cell so whenever possible we need to choose primitive unit cell okay rule number 5 whenever possible the edges of the unit cell should be orthorhombic that means they should possess interfacial angle 90 degree if there is no alternatives then the interfacial angle should be so chosen that that is be maximum close to 90 degree okay now concentrate on this pattern this is actually a rectangular grid pattern okay so we may have three types of choice of unit cell here these are a b and c on the unit cell a the interfacial angle is just 90 degree okay all are orthogonal on choice of b look here the interfacial angle is not 90 degree this is somewhat inclined parallelogram on the other hand the next choice the last choice c it is the most inclined parallelogram all are good choices for unit cell but the best choice is the a okay why because this is qualifying this rule 5 the last rule that is the rule 6 is more a convention than a rule that is saying the highest axis of symmetry should be so oriented that it coincides with the c crystallographic direction of the crystal okay now suppose this is a crystal having six identical faces and this is the shape of the unit cell i have chosen so what is the highest symmetry present in this unit cell i have a six fold rotational axis that is going vertically along the center of this unit cell okay so the choice of unit cell will be 
best if the seek stereographic direction of this crystal is coinciding with this uh, six fold rotational symmetry okay so this is more a convention than a rule we should keep it in our uh, background knowledge okay so now we have understood the six basic rules to choose the uh, prominent unit cell now we will answer the first question that what will be the best choice for this pattern or for this structure okay first coming to this first choice the unit cell a okay here the plus points are this is primitive because in cumulative here we have uh, taken one motif in total but the problem is this unit cell is actually lacking the horizontal mirror plane which is possessed by this uh, pattern okay and again here the edges of this unit cells are not orthogonal so this choice is failed coming to the second choice here first looking into the positive side of this unit cell this choice here we have the edges orthogonal very good second one is this is also primitive because on the corner we are using one fourth of each motif and on the sides we are using half of this black dot so in cumulative this is containing one motif in total okay so this is primitive again look here we have a horizontal mirror plane also but the problem is the choice is somewhat complex otherwise this choice will be okay now coming to the third choice point c here we are seeing a very negative point that this unit cell is not primitive that means the unit cell is not reduced so this choice again failed now the fourth choice okay see this is primitive the horizontal mirror plane is present here so that means this unit cell is having the same symmetry like this pattern okay and very clearly this is a pretty much simple choice than this one okay so that means we have the best choice this one okay so this is the best choice this is the most prominent unit cell chosen for this pattern or this structure okay so with that we have came to the end of this class and i think you have understood how to choose a best fit unit cell for a given lattice or for a given pattern okay thank you for listening thank you for watching keep visiting concepts of geology the online platform where we are learning crystallography now through a comprehensive series of uh, classes okay thank you